In this video, I'm going to reveal a secret playbook that helped me close million dollar deal. What I'm going to lay out is highly unconventional in the world of commodity trading. This is the reason why now is the prime time to use this playbook to be the first one to deploy it in your vertical. And as you must know, in commodity trading, any micro advantage over your competition could help you make millions. But before I give you the playbook, let me give you a little bit of context. Any seasoned commodity merchant will tell you that trust makes sales. Trust is a bridge between people that facilitate transactions. The higher the amount of money, the stronger the bridge needs to be. Also, trust decreases drastically the cost of transaction. Think about it. Suppose you want to buy copper cathode from a new supplier. Let's list together the cost of that transaction. First, you must fly there, see the people, see the plant, check the product, do your due diligence on the ground. So usually um, those type of industry are not located to a big city. So the cost of the flight is quite high. So let's say $1,500. Then when you are there, you must pay for hotel, food, and maybe also entertainment for the whole uh, binding with your counterparty. 500 bucks. So let's say then you go back to your home, you agree on the price and everything, and uh, you send the contract, uh, you do a little bit of legal due diligence, and uh, finally you are ready to ship the product. So at that point, you need to send an inspection company to sample the product, to be there doing the stuffing, to add your own seal on the containers, and so on. And honestly, if this is a um, new supplier for copper cathode, any seasoned, again, commodity trader will tell you that you need to go there to inspect by yourself and be there with the inspector when the container are stuffing. And also it will show to your counterparty that you are not someone that you can get scammed, that you are someone professional and so on. And also when you are doing your first shipment with a counterparty, it's always good to bring some gift for the office of your uh, counterparty. So I used to bring perfume, chocolate from Switzerland, you know, small gift like this for, for everyone in the office because, you know, it always helps to be nice. A friend of mine <laughs> used to give iPad, so <laughs> that's on another level, you know. But uh, yeah, so he came uh, to the office with like five iPads, give one to each and so on. And I mean, <laughs> it, it worked well for him. <laughs> Okay, and after that, uh, the payment term. So as you don't trust your counterparty, you are going to use a confirmed letter of credit. And the cost of the letter of credit depends on a lot of parameters. So let's say for that shipment, it's going to cost 4,000 US dollars. So if we add up everything, you'll see that the cost of transaction is minimum 10,000 US dollars. And with that, I'm not even factoring the extra time required to, to make it work. But let's have this number in our mind. It's easy to remember. Now let's do the same transaction with a supplier that you've been trading with for 10 years that you know very, very well. So basically here, you don't have to fly there because uh, you know the guy. You don't need to send your own inspection um, company because you can use actually what uh, the supplier is uh, providing you. Uh, especially if he pays himself already for SGS or any other inspection company. Do you want to use expensive letter of credit as payment method? I don't know. Maybe you just want to do something like cash against a copy of the document if you know your supplier very well. So if we add up all the cost of that transaction, it would be roughly zero US dollar. Then in this example, I'm not even speaking about the fact that if you know your supplier very well, when a claim arises, because I can tell you there is always issues, <laughs> um, the advantage to speak with someone that you can trust, that you know is going to be of good faith, uh, it worth millions. So let's say you have, you have a claim, like the, the product arrives um, at destination and uh, it's a little bit of specification. If your supplier don't trust you, he's going to say, oh, I'm going to come, I don't care, uh, I'm not going to speak about a discount, blah, 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 it's you, blah, blah, blah. But if he, he knows you, maybe he can just say, look guys, so this product is off spec, I'm sorry, we cannot ship it to the first uh, client, so we need to find another one. We are going to get, take a hit, the hit is this one, um, like, what, what can we do? Maybe we can uh, take the loss 50-50, maybe the guy is going to take 60-40, I don't know, but this, you can maybe solve it in a one-hour conversation, and 
on the other case, maybe you won't solve it and um, I mean, you as a trader are going to uh, lose a lot of money. So, I mean, the, the trust and knowing that your counterparty is in good faith is extremely, extremely important in, in terms of a claim. So, and I don't know how much it was, probably multi-million <laughs> US dollars. So I hope that you've got it. Uh, and, but just keep in mind that trust is one of the most important pillars in a commercial process. Now, there's another pillar which is as much important as trust in any endeavor. And this one is luck. So if you are new to this channel, you probably think like a, a society asks you to think. So you have ideas in your brain that have been implemented. And one of these ideas would be like, oh, uh, you need to go to school to be smart or, you know, nonsense like this. So luck, a lot of people, when I'm speaking about luck, think that you cannot increase your luck, which is totally wrong. So let me quickly walk you through the four stages of luck. And please, please be focused because it's important to understand the, the secret playbook down the line. Blind luck. This is the kind of luck that happens by chance. You find a $100 bills on the ground or it's luck that you are born into a wealthy family or in a wealthy country with better opportunities. This type of luck is completely out of control and is purely random. This type of luck happens when you work hard and put yourself out there. It's based on the law of large numbers. If you do something often enough, something good is bound to happen. In that type of luck, the more action you take, the more chance you get of being lucky. This stage of luck is about prepared for opportunity where they come. It involves a deep understanding of a particular field, which enables you to recognize opportunities that others might miss. This type of luck is also often referred as serendipity. You were prepared to seize the opportunity. This is the highest level of luck, where your unique skills, interest, and personality attract luck automatically. It's about being so uniquely good or interesting in a certain area that opportunities seek you. For that type of luck, I really like the example given by Naval Ravikant, this techno billionaire philosopher. And he explains that if you are the best and most renowned deep sea scuba diver, maybe one day a guy who hunts old sunken vessel will call you up to partner in a treasure hunt to retrieve gold pieces, heart from an ancient Greek ship. And in that specific case, he needs your unique skills. Here, the idea is to stop relying on blind luck to cultivate the kind of luck that comes from your unique character. And with that, you can ultimately escape competition and drive better profit margin than the world market. Got it? Now that you understand that trust and luck are the two most important pillars, think about it. Is there anything you could do to increase both. Can, can you think of something? So this is the secret playbook that I'm going to reveal. Buckle up. The secret playbook is building up your online personal brand. I know, I know you probably saw it when you click on that video that I was going to give you some shady tricks, <laughs> trading tricks or <laughs> something like this. And after this long lasting context building introduction, you were, you were hoping for, for something else. But no man, <laughs> but please trust me, Keep watching this video to the end. It will make a lot of sense. And if you follow this playbook now, I can guarantee that it will bring you much more success than you could ever imagine. And <laughs> I really believe that, seriously. So please stick to the end, you'll see. Because as I said, now it's the time to act on it. Creating content online makes people feel that they know you, which increase trust and luck. I mean, the craziest story that happened with me on YouTube is that a billionaire reached out to me. Me, me, <laughs> that man, the guy is a billionaire. He reached out to me because he wanted to speak with me. <laughs> what the f is going on here? <laughs> so you can say whatever you want, but the fact that I put something on YouTube increased my luck that I couldn't ever imagine that something like this would ever happen. So in the rest of this video, I will explain why now is the best time to build your online personal brand, why the commodity industry is the easiest to create content for. I will also give you example of other people that are doing it um, in the commodity world. I think that are doing it right. And, and finally, what you should do if you want to start your own. All right, so let's start with a small clip from Alex Ormozzi, a guy who is building his personal brand to grow his private equity business. I do think that from a money-making perspective, it is a, it is a time warp. 
uh, you can just go way faster. Mm -hmm. And that is because you can attract talent at such a higher rate than you could otherwise. You can bring people on who already know your values, know what you're about, have already consumed more content than most people's employees currently know about them and their way of doing business. You can basically pre-train your entire team before they come on board because of the amount of stuff that you put out. And those are just unbelievably valuable things. Not to mention, you know, if, if you're on the deal side, you know, like for us, like investing in companies, we have so much more trust at the table. And I think Charlie Munger said, trust is uh, the ultimate lubricant for deals is like, there's just what you're both trying to make the deal happen rather than being competitive. And I think that just, it's, it's so much better as a process, uh, having been on in both types of deals, very competitive deals, like white knuckle deals and really friendly deals, way more fun to do friendly deals. For the people who use their online presence and fluent to build a massive business are now plethora. The most famous being uh, Mr. Beast uh, with Fistable, Logan Paul with Prime, Kelly Jenner with uh, Kelly Cosmetics, and I would even add to this list uh, Elon Musk and Tesla. But all of those are B2C products, products for consumer. But right now, in the shadows of those big online influencers, there is a new breed of people that create content for specific B2B market. They cater to a small group of people, but extremely qualified. I would even say that those B2B content creators have a better deal than mainstream influencers, as they are well known among their peer, but not by the mainstream people. And also the monetization of the social media in B2B is way more interesting. For instance, uh, look at me as an example. If someone closed a deal with me because he got to know me on YouTube, it will worth the effort of putting those type of video online. Because I'm telling you, it's a lot of time. (laughs) And sometimes I think the quality is not that good compared to the time that I put in. I know that all of those uh, videos are like little hook you know, to, to catch a fish. But if I would only rely on, on the money that <laughs> I would make with uh, YouTube ads, like all the big uh, influencers, it, it would make no sense for me. Look at, look at this. Trafigura, Glencore, Cargill, Vital. <laughs> Have you ever seen someone on Vital speaking about anything anywhere? And I'm not speaking about like social media, I mean, conferences and so on. Have you seen anybody from Vital? No. So this is your opportunity. The employees are forbidden to say anything online. This is why most of them don't even have a a LinkedIn profile. So this is a completely left field for you as an entrepreneur to seize because your main competitor are just not there. You can make below quality content and still have a lot of traction. I mean, look at my first video. They, they are bad, seriously, they are bad, but still get views. And the reason is that nobody was speaking about physical commodity trading on YouTube before me. It was a wide blue ocean for me. You don't need to be good to get traction. <laughs> this is what I want to say. You don't have to be Mr. Beast, you know, if you want to get views. So think about it, got it? Now let me show you other people that are using other mediums than YouTube to make them themselves known. Here we have Lina that writes about uh, cargo claims on LinkedIn. She's really crushing. There there is Stu that has a podcast about scrap business. And here there is Darius that has a fantastic newsletter about chemicals. You see, you don't have to do YouTube stuff like me to um, get your name out there. You can write, you can speak, you, know, you can do whatever you feel is the most easy for, for you to start. Now, I do hope that after this video, you really think, really, really think about starting something. And this is why I want to finish this video with a bunch of non-obvious pieces of advice from Sean Perry on how to start your personal brand in 2024. One, who follows you is far more important than how many people follow you. Create content that will attract the type of people that you want. So this last sentence really made me think about what I was doing on YouTube because I think that I'm doing too much uh, stuff about like for low level people, people that want to start. And actually this is good for my um, shipping and commodity academy, but at the end of the day, I make way more money with deals uh, as a commodity trader than with the academy. The academy is good to spot talent and stuff like that. But yeah, that really made me think that maybe I should do more high level video that get less views and maybe do some short for people to get to to know me, I don't know, I don't know. But it really made me think about what I should do uh, uh, with my channel. Two, you want to be known well, not well known. Fame is the wrong role. 
you want a narrow set of people that know a lot about you, become famous within your bubble. How do you become known well? You have to share stories, hopes, dreams, fear and obsession. So this part also makes me think that I don't share a lot about my personal life uh, here uh, because I don't want to talk about uh, my, my, my children and so on. I don't want you to, to see them because I can tell you I receive very, very weird email. People are completely crazy. So um, yeah, this is uh, to protect a little bit my personal life. But maybe I can share more about like, as I said, dreams, obsession, hobbies that I have or stuff like that, uh, that yeah, I need to, to think about that. Four, don't worry about your writing style or production quality. Maybe I think that I don't worry enough about my production quality. <laughs> I have the other problem. <laughs> Six, the rule of 100. Put in 100 focus reps before expecting result. Okay, so this is completely true. I mean, for my YouTube channel, I, I saw like that it really picked up a few, few months ago, seriously. Um, so before that, it was flat and I was working, working a lot actually to to make sub quality stuff <laughs> for a long, long time. So whatever you do, whatever you pick, do 100 of them and then see if uh, yeah, it works or not. Seven, pick the platform that suits you. Every platform works, long form, short form, text, video, podcast. So I leave a link below this video if you want to read the full thread of uh, Sean Perry on uh, Twitter. And uh, yeah, so that's it for me today. I hope that you like this video and that you learned something. But please, if you are a small entrepreneur or even a big one actually, and you want to have a massive competitive advantage against the big guys of your industry, think about putting content online. Seriously, it will make a huge difference down the line. And now if your objection is like, oh, but Daniel, how can you say that? The big companies of today are still extremely secretive. So, uh, I mean, there must be a reason why, why do, don't you want us to, to do the exact opposite? And to that objection, I will just tell you that don't forget that the fortune of tomorrow are not going to be made with the same recipe of yesterday. Ciao.